back, Pokemon Go players, to another episode of the Purify Podcast. Today is January 31st, 31st, 2020. I am your host, Luis Palacios, with my co-host, Chris. It's your boy, Pokemon Triggers. <laughs> and we're bringing you the big 5-0, episode 50. Yes. Very excited. Yes, 50. Our 50th episode is how you say it in English, I guess. Uh, <laughs> um... 50 episodes for the first, uh, I mean, it's crazy. We've been doing this for 50 weeks. We took a break one time, but in technically, because we did a bonus episode somewhere in between, we technically didn't take a break. We just were going long. <laughs> uh, so we've been actually publishing in for li- uh, it's seriously 50 weeks entirely. So that's actually uh, very amazing. Thank you so much for like the support and everything. Um, our one year anniversary is coming, so we really are getting there. Crazy, right? Crazy. <clears throat> Dude, All right. Yeah, the support has been amazing. Indeed, indeed. So, uh, we're here once again to talk about Pokemon Go news updates and ranting about Pokemon Go because we love the game just as much as you do. Thank you so much for joining us once again. And let's make sure we remind everybody that we are part of the Professor Network. Your camera is all the way over here uh, just because, uh, you know. <laughs> Hello, there you are. Anyways, uh, Professor I'm just hiding. <laughs> PokemonProfessor.com slash Purify Podcast. Uh, our mission, of course, is to bring all the news and updates. And, of course, their mission is to bring it around the world with every single kind of news and updates they can bring out. So please make sure you check them out. Wonderful people. Uh, they're on a little break just because I think the host uh, is uh, working very hard on a lot of different things. So uh, once they come back, make sure you follow them. <laughs> all righty thank you so much all right should we shift the gears again chris let's see what our recaps are this week what do you got for me uh well i can say this much i do not have any hundos mm-hmm. um i know you said you were pretty light this week too i did get some exciting shinies though Ooh. um i don't remember too much of my first ones so while it loads in i'm gonna tell you what my last one was i got a shiny shadow pincer uh in my last uh rocket balloon from uh james um so that was pretty exciting um i'm gonna save uh one of the shinies for later because it, it kind of pertains to something else we're going to talk about <laughs> but um i ended up getting three of those and then i got a shiny marie uh shortly after that event nice um, so it's it pretty exciting it's like there was no point of the event because you're you're you got one already anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's no. not bad After either. that calm day. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, aside from of course the Mareep uh, incense day that we had a uh, week True. ago, technically, uh, we just really didn't need to, you know, know about this. But anyways, it's not like we we are short on shinies. Technically, Mareep was for me the one Pokemon that I didn't actually have extras because I only have the one for each of the families uh, before mm-hmm. evolution. So uh, that was, was good. It was good to have. Now for me again, just like you said, I am extremely low on Hondos. I did get a Hondo PG, I think that was last week. No, actually it was this week, 27. Oh, I did get a Hondo then. Hondo PG, hello. That works. Yeah, that <laughs> works, I guess. Uh, I really consider it because I was like out and about for a second there. Somebody called it out. I was like, I was a few minutes closer by and I'm like, okay, let me do this. Skew the other way. So yeah. Okay. So one hundo. That's not bad. It's still, you know, 154 hundos. Pretty nice. <laughs> Weed. And shinies. As for shinies, not shiny, but shiny. Uh, uh, yeah, no, super light after the community, uh, after the, um, Marie Pinsons Day. I did get two from this Sneasel, and we will talk, be talking about that in a second, too. And I already had three from before, so I kind of like five right now, so. Same, <laughs> yeah, same. Yeah, so, it was kind of one of those events where you're just like, okay. <laughs> yeah, something extra. It, it was something fun to do pass yeah the time. yeah i mean there's a lot of events going on between the celebrations and uh the raids and everything uh we we had ente until just recently raiku just came back into raids we'll, we'll also be talking about it in just a moment um mm-hmm. but sneasel research day what's one of those events where you can finish it up in the first hour if you wouldn't have anything else to do 
hopefully you got the Hondo, hopefully you got the Shiny, because a lot of people also say that we're in between either getting the Shiny or the Hondo, so... And some people, of course, got the Shando, which I think that was the goal for us playing it, so... <laughs> Um, it's such a good uh, Pokemon to yeah. have an earthquake really opens up a lot for it. Yes, and it is a nice type, so he wrecks the grass type somewhere. And some dragons in between. Especially Giratina. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's of course the Sneasel Research Day. Not a bad night uh, or day, I guess. It was a 12 hour event, so if you didn't get the chance to do it really. You could have done it in like half an hour, 20 minutes if you were fast enough. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, after that, we had, we still actually know, by the time you're listening to this and by the time we're actually live right now, the Johto celebration just ended. Like the minute we started this podcast, because we were so well and finished on, you know, getting things done during the podcast and everything. Um, but the Jota celebration, you know, if you didn't get your T Tars to uh, SmackDown Tyranitars, I don't know what to tell you. We warned you since last week. This is your event. This is the moment. <laughs> I I will say I have been seeing a lot more Typhlosion and Go Battle League. Yes. So I, I do think it was thanks to this event. Yes. Now, because of the Ultra, uh, because the potion is really only good in Ultra, unless you've got like, try large candies and max it out, of course, but. Um, yeah. In all honesty, uh, Typhlosion could actually be viable. I've been using my beautiful Meganium, and it's been working out pretty well for me. <laughs> Such a spicy pick, too. I got I got to give you props for that. That I is so spicy. I know, I know. I'll, I'll write it alone, and hopefully <laughs> we'll get me going somewhere, you know? Uh, I mean, I'm already rank 14, if we actually go and look right now. Uh, yeah, rank 14. You can't really see the number, unfortunately. Like, it's that glitch. Unless you do a battle, it won't actually fix itself. Um, yeah, it's so weird. But I've done, so far, 170 battles this season. And I know, I know, I know, I'm very low on battles because I really didn't do much during the first half of the Season 6 uh, celebration. Mm -hmm. But I still have 28 days. I'll try to make sure to get all my battles in every day, if possible. I mean... I've been doing it through streams, so it's actually working pretty well since, you know, our shiny hunts are low on, on things. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'll be using that and be doing those. So uh, not a bad, not a bad uh, start to it. So Johto Celebration, once again, uh, a lot of Pokemons had the community they moves finally in there, except for Totodile, because, you know, Totodile being one of those Pokemons that doesn't, wasn't part of the 20. 18 community today i think it was yeah so yeah yes yeah, so, uh unfortunately you know that's what it is but if hopefully you did get your tarantars your emperors to your their community day moves that's the, the most shadows important shadows i got a two two three shadows and one is like a 93 i think or so Ooh, beautiful that's nice beautiful beautiful hunt them or shut or uh, well shut up thank you <laughs> uh <laughs> but that's what it is and then, of course, uh, just like we mentioned, Raikou is here, Entei. Uh, I know you were a little bit sad on Entei there, Chris. I didn't get my own shiny uh, Entei yet. I had to trade for a lucky shiny one. Um, so I'm still hunting that one on my own. Okay. All right. I mean, I'm sure they'll come uh, back eventually. Oh, yeah. Oh, the, yeah. The only... um, Raikou's cool, though. Raikou is a cool uh, Pokemon. Shiny-wise, eh, it could be a little bit better, but... And honestly, Raikou is probably one of the best uh, electric type attackers aside from uh, Sekrom. Yes, Sekrom being the number one uh, electric attacker in, in the meta. Uh, and that's because of yeah, his. Yeah, Zekrom his, and yeah. Uh, Zapdos are both pretty good. Uh, Sekrom is better than Zapdos. Zapdos is, I think, third to uh, Raikou. So Raikou is number two in the leaderboard on that, <laughs> at least. However, um, we had had events where we have. Got in shinies, uh, some handos in between all three of the legendary beasts, which of course you'll see between each the next week or so. Uh, and we had shinies, and also, really, aside from getting the hando or the shando, there's really not much that you really want to do with the Pokemon. Now, if you're a fan of them, go ahead and raid them, that's up to you. But yeah. right now, a lot of us, especially Chris and I, are trying to save up because the next celebration is coming right up. <laughs> oh, I'm dropping! I'm dropping money for that, man. Oh, dude, you you, you <laughs> probably won't know the amount of money I'm gonna be dropping in those ten days. But we'll talk about it in just a moment. <laughs> so, 
Dude, I, I expect a lot of invites from people. Yeah, yeah, Ooh. definitely. Oh, if I'm not getting invites for, for what we're talking about in a minute, I'm searching for them. Like, I'm going to every single Discord in the world and say, do you have a mint? Oh do you God. have this? Do you have that? You're, I already spoiled it, but whatever. You already, I already know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that is really it for the recaps. We haven't really had many, 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 many things to talk about. Uh, and the mm -hmm. news section is actually going to be looking pretty, pretty small today. Uh, just because we were a little early in some of the announcements from the beginning of this week, since the Sneasel, uh, Sneasel Research Day, and I think the Love Cup was also introduced during the time that we recorded the last podcast. So, <laughs> either way, those news you already got, thanks to us being a little bit late, but that means that we have just a bit of news for this one. So, Chris, you want to talk about what is uh, next? Yeah. Uh, we have a little bit of a word that the Team Go Rocket seems to be getting ready to celebrate something. We don't know what, but we do know that they're bringing a few new Shadow Pokemon along, and some of them are pretty exciting. Yes. So, Team Go Rocket is celebrating. Smells like trouble. You like, gotta love Niantic's wording with this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, trainers, Team Go Rocket celebrating, but why? It's up to us to find out, or I'm sorry, it's up to you to find out. You, the trainer, everybody's a trainer. <laughs> Here's what you can expect during Team Go Rocket celebration event. So, the date and time, sources point that this event occurs occurring from Tuesday, February 2nd, which is on Tuesday this week, coming up uh, at 10 a.m. to Sunday, February 7th at 8 p.m. local time. So, that's five days worth of events. That's not bad. Mm -hmm. It kind of keeps us going because we still have two more weeks before the uh, Canto Celebration event. So, that's... Oof. Uh, features for this event. We receive word the Tingo Rocket Grunts will be turning... The following Pokemon into Shadow Pokemon. Uh, uh, Swine Up, Nosepass, Aeron, Seal, uh, Lilipep, or Lili yeah, Lilipep, Aeronaut, and more. So, out of those they just mentioned, and I know there's going to be a couple extra more out there, what do you think about those picks? All of them are freaking amazing. All of them. Uh, Pilot Swine, especially for the second Evos for a lot of them. Piloswine, uh, Lairon, uh, Celio, especially the Body Slam God. Uh, a lot of people have been talking about um, the evolution of Lily. Its name is escaping me right now. And I have seen people uh, Crine, using uh, Cross Poison. Not Cradilly, yeah. Cradilly, Cradilly, yeah. And uh, the evolution of Anorith is just pretty amazing with uh, Cross Poison because his attack stat is a lot higher than you think it is. Yes, um, yes. I'm definitely excited. Uh, that's for sure. That is for sure. Uh, just like you said, Seal. Aaron will be interesting as a shadow, especially for uh, Agron. Uh, no Spice is a monster. And Swine Up could be interesting. All of them are so good. There I, are... I haven't <laughs> seen this many good ones added for a while. Yes, definitely. So, aside from the ones they mentioned, there haven't been more additions, so maybe there will be a bit of a switch up between Rocket uh, Grunts and everything, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, but more to come, of course. Tingo Rocket Grunts will also have different teams of Pokemon to redepend in after its conclusion. So, looks like the, the way that they have Pokemon switch up, probably in different spots, or maybe they're going to have like ones that we had before that haven't come back yet, so... Mm. Um, the teams will be different, so we have to prepare a little bit better. But again, you have the warning of the of the uh, grunt telling you what type it's going to use. So just be careful what you get, because maybe something different this time around. Um, maybe Crowler will go back to grunts, and then the leaders will have something else. So the t uh, Defeat Tingo Rocket Leaders during the event of our chance of receiving a Pokemon uh, Tingo Rocket Leader gift sticker. I know they're rare, like right? That. They're rare. Oh, yeah. They're mega rare. Yeah. Uh, be on the lookout for Pokemons like Golbat, Coffin, Aridos, Quellfish, Sneasel, Houndour, uh, Nuzleaf, Stunky, Scorpy, and Benepeat appear more often in the wild. So there will also be some Pokemons in the wild, specifically that is Scorpy, because that Scorpy has been eluding maybe as a shiny for a while, though. Kind of sad that they specify Golbat there, because it makes me think... Uh because of that Zubat won't be spawning that much and I would appreciate a shiny Zubat. 
Maybe. <laughs> Maybe the shiny will come out second stage or something. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> Uh, Crawfish, Labrador, uh, Corfish, Apso, Scorpi, Sandal, Scraggy, uh, Ponyar, Volby, and Dino will be hatching from strange, uh, strange eggs following and after the event. So the pool of the 12k eggs is going to be switching. I'm actually okay with this. Uh, Quellfish is a shiny chance. Labrador is a shiny chance. Corfish, I'm not sure why it's still there. Apso, I don't know why it's still there, but I guess I got to get the Hundo. Uh, Scorp is a shiny shine. Sandals is more than welcome because we don't have enough. Scraggy, we had quite a bit of them. I don't know if they're spawning in the wild anymore. Ponyar, of course, we need more. Wallaby, I don't want to see anymore. And of course, the Dino <laughs> uh, being the <laughs> only one that really matters in that pool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cor I heard a lot of people have been saying Corefish is the new uh, Trubbish. Yes, yes, it's probably going to be that. And <laughs> and I'm just gonna, I agree. I'm going to hash so many of them and I'm going to be like, yeah, no, I don't care about this anymore. <laughs> no, uh, no. I do. Okay, so real quick before we continue with the news is that I've been doing, you know, normal stuff. I never really buy a, a, a radar for the read leaders. And when I get the egg, it's, I mean, Same. it's kind of nice um, because, you know, you, it's another egg that you can hatch aside from the normal Nike K eggs and everything. Now that you, of course, you have your extra baggage of space for the eggs, you know, it's nice. Love that, by the um, way. However, the, the, every time it's just like me and in between 12 kilometers or eight kilometers with super incubator, every time it hatches, I'm just like super disappointed. <laughs> just like it's, it's nine out of 10 times Volaby or Trubbish. That's, and that's the 0.001% chance that we'll have a dino. I think I only has like two dinos in the time that it's been that this thing has been has actually like come out. I don't think I've hatched a single dino. Honestly, yeah, no, I have but... hatched two sand dials though, so I can't yeah, complain. Yeah, I have I hatched one, I got one from this, uh, some of the one of the events that we had earlier in the year mm -hmm. or last year. Uh, but that's about it. Uh, Ponyar, I got a couple of them. Scraggy, I mean, at this point, I don't care. Bull will be too yeah. many to count, <laughs> and then the rest, of course. When I see an Absol or even a Trubbish, I'm just like, why? <laughs> Uh, yeah, the only reason to really hatch Absol is for the Hundo, but that's about it. That's the only serving grace. Now, Quellfish will be, of course, a shiny availability, so you get the chance on that. If my it's luck welcome. is good, maybe I'll get it. We'll see. <laughs> uh, the following Pokemon will be in raids. So, in one star raids during the event Alola Meowth, Alola Grimer, Gligar, Sneasel, Shinx, and Clink. Again, don't send me any Shinx. I don't want them. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're gonna meme on you now i know i know that i want people to meme on me for that reason but you know it's like i got this it's like dude i can show you my entire collection and you can't win against me right now <laughs> <laughs> uh three star raids uh we have nido queen eridos umbreon tyranitar and absol uh, between tyranitar and absol okay umbreon if you want to get the extra large candies and yeah. then arios i have no idea what's in there <laughs> yeah that that's just there for easy raids i think but I yeah tyranitar we haven't seen him for a while right yeah it's been, been nice. quite a bit and yeah. pretty like sneaky now that we got our, our you know our more champs ready for it <laughs> <laughs> uh spy star raids yes so <laughs> far star raids will be raiko and suikon will both be appearing at different times and of course we mentioned that in our Ray boss is scheduled in February. We'll discuss that a little bit further from in the next part of the news, of course. And then Mega Raids. We have uh, Mega Venusaur, Mega Ampharos, and Mega Handum. Uh, mm, excuse me. And <laughs> good thing that I can actually turn off the microphone. <laughs> uh, but yeah, those, I mean, those are Megas that we have got a lot of them already. Uh, I'm trying to get my uh, my Hondo Venus or two best bodies, so I'm ready for any Megas or any Pokemons that I need, basically. That's nice. And for us, I haven't evolved yet, but I'll get it eventually when I need it the most. Only Dude, yeah, I, I, I haven't most. got I haven't got a single Mega Ampharos raid um, yet. Do you have any energy for it? No. Ooh. Uh, cause I, I know they'll probably put it into research sometime soon. That's why I'm not too stressed out about it right now. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, well that, that's for sure. Anyways, uh, events include field research and time research will be available just like we, 
you know, that every other event. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we have Team Gold Rocket Team Time Research that begins during the Jojo celebration will continue during this event and will reward the legendary Pokemon Hoho that knows exclusive move at um, Earthquake. Uh, we do have eight days and one hour of this event as of the recording of this podcast, of course. Um, but the second page to be able to encounter Hoho is to defeat each one of the leaders. So make sure you grind out a little bit because eight days may not be enough for if you want to get them. <laughs> Yeah, do your rocket balloons. Uh, you will have to walk around. Yeah, probably. Yeah, just for a bit. Uh, but if I mean, it's a shiny possibility, so make sure you do them. And then, of course, keep a lookout for more invaded box stuff and Tinko Rockets balloons than usual. So, because of the event, we may actually be able to finish up the research a little bit easier because we will have more of the actual um, rocket grunts than usual, and then we'll be able to do more of the leaders eventually. So, and then the bonuses for this event. Half egg hash distance when an egg is placed in, uh, inside an incubator during the event. So half of what it is. That's actually pretty cool. Pretty nice. <laughs> pretty sweet. Right? <laughs> I, I'm always happy with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you don't do a lot of eggs like I do. Let's let's make sure let, let's um, let's compare for everybody to know what's your egg hatches. <laughs> Metal. You're gonna throw me on, under the bus like this? Yes. <laughs> No, yes. I'm joking. <laughs> uh, let's take a look. Let's take a look. Uh, I know it's like half a year. Because so uh, usually I like to do raids more than eggs. I, I just don't really see the point of doing eggs a lot of the time. Uh, my egg badge is platinum, but it is 3,895. Oh, God. Yeah, I'm looking at yours right now. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, 12,273 eggs combined out of four years of hatching. Um, I don't know why. It's the only thing that I really want to pay for, for to be able to. I, I kind of want to cycle them through easily. And to be honest, I actually have some pretty cool stuff out of those 12,000 eggs. I'm almost in par mm -hmm. with uh, Reversal because Reversal announced that he was like 15, 15k on this. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I looked that over. I was like, okay, that's not bad. I mean, I'm sure that he grinds a lot harder than I do, but still, mm -hmm. uh, when it comes down to it, it's, you know, that, that type of deal. I uh, mean, uh, I can definitely get behind eggs too because with a raid, you're not guaranteed to even get the Pokemon. Yeah. With eggs, you're guaranteed to get the yeah. Pokemon. Although so the, that's, when, that's the IBs are just like the same as raids anyway. So when you see the 10-10-10, the yeah. you're like, why did I even hatch you? Why did I even have you? <laughs> then again, then again, it is a mystery what it's going to be. That's true. So. That, I mean, we technically know the pool of all the Pokemon's hatching from eggs. So. True. Uh, it's not too bad when it comes down to it. But anyways, that is, of course, the uh, Team Gold Rocket Celebration. Again, just take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. uh, get as many shadows as you can. Um, purify enough many as you want to. Purify podcasts, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there is more to come. So what is the very next feel of events? Because this is just not one event. It's multiple. Oh, boy. Well, as you guys know, today is the 31st. So tomorrow... We're going to be starting the February events. Uh, so that should be pretty exciting. Um, I'm kind of sad. I know you were sad that we didn't get Shiny uh, or Hondo for uh, our boy Chansey. Yeah. But uh, the next month, we'll be encountering Snorlax and Research Breakthroughs. So that's interesting. It makes you wonder why they're putting them in there. Well, there, it's coming back for a while uh, since uh, it's been on Research Breakthrough boxes for quite a bit of time so um mm. i can't really say for sure when it was that we saw it but nor snorlax coming back it's not a bad addition getting the hondo would be ideal for a lot of different things of course shadow uh shadow snorlax is better uh yeah squish your butt better um but again you gotta remember that by the time that the celebration counter celebration comes in you will have at least two chances to get sh uh shiny uh snorlax from the research breakthrough box once it's shiny is releasing Pokemon Go next uh, next month, mm -hmm. which is not bad, but again, it doesn't give us a full four weeks chance. Actually, it's even less. So how many weeks in February do we have? Just to make uh, sure. It goes to the twenty eighth, so you should still be able to fit in three. Right, and I do. Uh, I don't know yes. if you can fit in a fourth. You I can hit. You can, you can actually. Uh, you can do four if you time it out correctly. So I have my daily streaks synced up to be able to read ready on Sundays. 
So mine actually goes like first day Monday, last day Sunday, seven day streak. So every okay. time. So I always get one research breakthrough box a week uh, per sun- every Sunday. Uh, luckily, I haven't break that streak. I be like every time something happens, like dude, somebody please spin a stuff for me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, at the same time, of course, we have the daily, uh, the daily uh, ones that we get each at midnight every time. So we don't really lose really? out on that, unless you really don't want to do them. But anyways, um, but yeah, you'll have the chances of at least four if you time it correctly. If you don't want to see any more, you can wait one day on Monday and then just open it up after four o'clock for the next one, of course. So yes, February first to March first, that will be the bridge research breakthrough box for this month. A lot of people, again, are having mixed feelings about that. Not as much as I thought, but, you know, Snorlax is Snorlax. I think people are realizing that the Shiny will be released, so they're not too sad yet. Yes, definitely. Uh, but yeah, of course. Uh, let's move on to the 5 stars and Mega Raids. Now, we did mention a few of them already, so uh, we're just going to go through, through them really quickly. So Entei just mm-hmm. ended from uh, yeah. Sunday 31st at 10, p- 10 a.m. local time. Uh, Raikou is right now in raids from the 31st to the 4th, which is only a few days from now. So that's when it's going to be gone by... Actually, it's going to be gone by Monday, isn't it? Oh, so five days per... Okay. Yeah, four days per... Actually, it's going to be gone by Thursday. My bad. Yeah. We're looking at Catalan runs. Anyways. <laughs> uh, then Suikun will be appearing from the 4th until the 9th. Then... The next ones that are coming around for the month of February will be Latios and Latias. will be coming into five-star race for February 9 until February 20th. So we got a couple, uh, technically, two, 11 days for it. That's actually almost two weeks. I need those shinies, man. I, need uh, those shinies. I could use the shinies. I want the hondos mostly because of Megas. Uh, I got the hondo for Latias. I just need Latio. Okay. Okay, well, I need them both, and I know the <laughs> Megas are coming, True. eventually. <laughs> uh, but yes. I, I forgot about that, too, when I got it. I know. Those uh, those are the two Megas that you really don't really care about, because when the time they were released, they were just, like, fly buses. <laughs> and, like, it's the same uh, generation you get uh, Mega Rayquaza, so they get outclassed, I think. Yes, you know. yes. Uh, I've seen some of them in commentary in their, in their PvP uh, scene, but not as much. However, Latios and Latios are powerful Dragon-type Pokemons and also uh, powerful Psychic-type Pokemons. They just need better moves. <laughs> At least in Pokemon. True. Uh, but again, that will be until the 20th, which is actually the beginning of the Kato event. And once that ends or begins, I guess, uh, Articuno, Sapto, Moltres, and Mewtwo will be appearing in five star rays beginning that Saturday, February 7th at 9 a.m. to Monday, March 1st at 8 a.m. local time. In addition, the following Pokemon's Mega Ball Pokemon's will be appearing. The, the following Mega Ball Pokemon will appear in raids. Uh, we'll go those. Uh, we'll go through the Megas in just a second there, but we thought. From the actual like announcement of the Kanto celebration, we thought that Articuno, Saltos, and Moltres will only be appearing during the time of the celebration, which is a 12-hour event, and people will probably go ham on that time. But you have your mix of catching a lot of Pokemons and raiding a lot of Mewtwo's. <laughs> I'm glad that they're prolonging it, but yes. it makes me a little bit nervous that the... Uh, move won't be available the whole time. I think it will be, but just in case, make sure you get your fair share of uh, Pokemon that you want the special move for it's, during the event. Well, they're most likely did say that the move was going to be available, so I'm sure they're gonna stick around until mm-hmm. then. It's the same when you know Mewtwo was released with Side Strike. Mm-hmm. They you know they gave it a good week or two, I guess, for it. So mm-hmm. not a bad thing. Um, but yeah. Uh, Mewtwo's, 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 yes, all day Mewtwo's. That's, that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be me for the next uh, ten days of that event. <laughs> uh, you you won't see me, but doing Mewtwo's like even on stream, I'll be like, send me more, send me more. <laughs> Need that Shundo. The only problem is that right. all four of them will be in the same pool, so they they're gonna be a little bit hard to find when it comes down to it. Uh, You're so right. <laughs> 
which is not bad. Some of the uh, birds are okay still, but again, Mewtwo is the grand prize. And now that you can remote raid them, <sighs> it's like water like drips up that my mouth just like. Of course, Niantic's my, uh, you know wallet is being wide open with my money right now. <laughs> Take my money. <laughs> Take my money. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, Mega Venusaur, Mega Ampharos, and Mega Honda will appear in race from the 19th to the 9th of February. Or February. Mega Pidgeot, Ampharos, and a surprise Mega Ball Pokemon will be appearing in Mega Race from Tuesday the 9th until Sunday, or I'm sorry, until Saturday, February the 20th. So, a mystery Mega Ball Pokemon. Here's the mystery. Thank you to Data Miners talking about it and finding some code. So, again, before we actually say this, we are not Data Miners. We don't break the rules, but the information is out there in the world, so we can talk about it. So, now that's that out of the way, the Pokemon that they actually found in the data code is Agron. Agron being the next Mega Evolved Pokemon. And people were talking to me, why are you walking Mega Ag or, or why are you walking Agron? Because I want my, my, my beautiful best body Agron to be ready for this to come. And that's going to be an interesting one for the birds. At the same time, too. Yes. Yes, because that will definitely destroy every single one of the birds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, it just kind of sucks uh, when he's mega, he loses his rock typing. Though. Is he? But, uh, he, he, yeah, he, he's the only uh, mega that loses a typing. What does he gain, then? Oh, he, he's just steel type. Oh, he when just becomes a pure mega. steel? Yeah, that, oh, that's the only thing. Oh, I did not know that. Ugh. <laughs> now I'm actually, I'm actually not liking it anymore. <laughs> he'll, he'll be, he'll be a good wall. He'll be a good wall. Well, yeah, it would be, but again, it's just like he is a rock steel type for a reason. Why would you just want a pure steel? It will be worse against. <laughs> well, not technically worse against uh, Moltres, but still, it's just you know. Eh. <laughs> I'll get enough yeah. candies to make a bubble once, and that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, that's basically, I think that, well, that's what we think it's going to be, but we're not completely sure. It's not confirmed from Niantic, and it's not confirmed in the blog post. So we'll see when that comes out, probably in the next week or so. Yeah, uh, they could change it, but probably not. Yes, yeah. uh, it's going to be before the 9th, so we're definitely going to have the news be either... Uh, or the, you know, the Pokemon is going to start somewhere by the end of this week. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, then Mega Venusaur, Charizard, uh, Mega Venusaur, Mega Charizard X and Y, and Mega Blasters will appear in Mega Race from the Saturday the 20th to Monday the 1st, coexisting, of course, with the uh, Birds and Mewtwo. Uh, again, Kanto Celebration. Going to be nice. Each week is February. We'll also include a raid hour event on Wednesday the 6th p.m. local time featuring the Pokemon currently active in 5 star raids. So, <sighs> we'll see. That's going to be interesting when it's uh, all the different uh, four Kanto legendaries. Yeah, yeah. Um, definitely. Because of the because of we can do just remote raids, it doesn't really matter. But I do want to actually go out for this one. For I both. might actually, too. Yeah, it's like, let's coordinate the next right hours for those days uh we're gonna go home yeah anyways um but yeah uh that is the raids they are mostly coming around uh february just is a pack full of a lot of like stuff to do like seriously it's a short month man it's they, a they put a lot into there <laughs> well it is the anniversary of pokemon uh, I wouldn't be True. surprised if tomorrow the Pokemon company, pro Pokemon proper, <laughs> announces some information or something. So uh, hold on to your buttocks because <laughs> we are about to be in for a full <laughs> month of Pokemon information. Thank you very much for, you know, throwing things away because that was probably the announcement. Your boy dropped his mic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Um, I can mute you for a second. Just make sure you get it. All right. Well, uh, Chris, uh, just let me know when you're ready. Uh, while Chris uh, fixes his mic, in the month of February, we also have our Spotlight Hours announcements already. So each Tuesday, 6 p.m., just like any other Tuesday, we'll have on Tuesday, February 2nd, we'll have Ekans in the Spotlight, and you'll earn 
twice the experience for evolving the Pokemon or evolving Pokemon, not just the Pokemon, but other Pokemon as well. So this will be a nice little grind session if you want to just get a lot of uh, experience. And then Tuesday, February 9th, uh, Mill 10 will be in the spotlight and you earn twice the status for catching the Pokemon. Surprisingly enough, Mill 10 being a spotlight Pokemon once the shiny has been released only a week ago, or actually technically a few minutes ago. <laughs> we also have Loves This on February the 16th and will be in the spotlight and you earn twice the experience for catching Pokemon. So another nice little extra experience event. That's pretty good. Okay, I see that you're good, Chris. Uh, and then on the 23rd, which is only, I believe, a few days off before Pokemon Proper's anniversary, Pikachu will be in the spotlight and you're on twice the candy for catching the Pokemon. So, what are you excited about, Chris? Uh, easily, Miltank is at the top of that. Yeah. Uh, Love Disc is a semi-rare shiny. Um, that's the only thing it's good for. <laughs> uh, but yeah mill tank with stardust is very exciting for me yeah that's easily hands down the best one Be hands down it is hopefully like um i think i have the day off i don't know we'll see uh but that's the one that you i really want to shine it off even though i didn't get one this week um yeah 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 they're good they're all good of course, Pikachu was going to be in the past spotlight the week of the anniversary. <laughs> There's no way this wouldn't be. Um, That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Unless they do like a rare one and then we're like, ah! <laughs> uh, then, of course, we did have more announcements of the Team Gold Rocket is back and celebrating, which we already talked about. Um, it is that if you're lucky, you may encounter a shiny shadow Pokemon by defeating Team Gold Rocket leaders. So the Team Gold Rocket leaders, I don't know if we did mention this, but they will be switching their lineup. Uh, as yeah. soon as the event starts on February 2nd. <sighs> Do you have any... I need to find that out ASAP. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see. Uh, do... <laughs> uh, do I know you have a couple of shiny shadows from the leaders, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which ones? Um, I Off the top of my head, I have two uh, shiny shadow... Um, I know you can look up... Uh, shiny and rocket um, and you can also do shiny all. and shadow oh apparently i only have one growth i got a two ammonite and one pincer um i guess that's all i had i th oh no i definitely had more i had grimer why are they not showing it? that's interesting uh, just to shiny and shadow. So for me, uh, yeah. we I don't have anything from this uh, lineup of shadow sh leaders. That's weird. Shadow shiny leaders. I don't have the Ammonite, the Drowsy, or the Growlithe. Um, I don't know. Just never really. They never really shine for me for some reason. I may mm -hmm. get still get one between today, tomorrow, and the beginning of mm -hmm. February or beginning of uh, Tuesday. So many Ekans. <laughs> so many Ekans. Yes, yeah, so as you can see, I have many Ekans. I did get the Pharaoh Seed and the Absol at the beginning of the times that there were in Shadow Shinies and then the Lapras too, so it was nice. Uh you said Pharaoh Seed, you mean um you mean the Fortress? Uh, yeah, Fortress uh, Pre Evolution, baby. yeah. I don't remember that name. Uh, Pineco, Pineco. <laughs> Pineco, thank you. Yeah, I was I was blanket too. <laughs> yeah. Uh Pineco's uh pre evolution, of course evolution, and then the other ones being interesting enough. Ah, uh, we'll see. I mean, I think I think uh, Jason James likes me most. I think Je uh, Jesse, Jesse likes me more because as you can see, the many Ekans that I have, and then the side. Did she love you, man? I don't know why. I I, I don't understand why. I mean, <laughs> go away. So, anyways, <laughs> just give um, me the other one. I did all, yeah, I did also get a shiny shadow Grimer and only one Ekans. So she likes me a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit. <laughs> Uh, but then, of course, we do have uh, Roselia's Community Day on the 7th, which is actually coming up this Saturday. Uh, really nothing much to talk about this, aside from, I think, it's, uh, it's hash distance for X, the bonus, I think. So, uh, it looks like the Gold Plus is going to be running for the rest of the week, for the rest of that. <laughs> It is good for PvP. That's about it, though. Yeah, well, I do have uh, a Hondo or two that I can actually evolve anyway, so... 
I, I think it's going to be an Ultra League monster. It's going to be the Ultra League version of uh, Sunny Cherim, I think. Well, we do have a day and a half before the event, uh, before Ultra League ends, so maybe I'll test that out. Mm. We'll see. Uh, of course, you can get a lot of candy for it, or extra large candy, so if you want to grind it out, of course, grind it out. That's up to you guys. Especially and... with it in egg, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you really want uh, Shenny Badoo, which I do, mm. I have, so... <laughs> I mean, I, I have everything for Rosalia. I have uh, every single Prevolution, Evolution, and Hundo. So I really, there's nothing I really want to do this event. Unless I get the Shadow, and that's like. <laughs> the luck is insane. But, anyways. Uh, we do have Ring in the Year of the Ox with our Lunar, Lunar New Year team event. So this event is back from Tuesday, February 9th, which is right after the Tingo Rocket event, uh, to Sunday, February 14th, right, right before Valentine's. Uh, encounter red Pokemon and celebrate the year of the Ox. A special Mega Evolved Pokemon will also be appearing in Mega Rings for the first time in the start of the events. Uh, more details to come, which I'm pretty sure they're going to be here next week. Um, but I'm pretty sure we already talked about the surprising Mega Evolved Pokemon anyways. Unless they cr throw a core about us and be like, here's Scyther for you. <laughs> yeah, that's really strange because Agron doesn't look too much like an Ox. Right. It's interesting. Uh, maybe. And again, I'm looking at my poster. Like I have a poster right here that I can look at. And the only other red uh, Mega Pokemon is Scyther. So. Interesting. Okay. That will be interesting. Then, of course, we have Celebrate the Valentine's Day. On Monday, February 8th to Monday, February 15th. Compete, compete in the Valentine's Day team go, uh, team. Love Cup in Go Battle League from form a team using Pokemons that are red or pink with a max CP of 1500 to enter. No legendary or mythical, so no uh, Deoxys. <laughs> uh, from Sunday, February 14th to Thursday, February 18th at 8 p.m. local time, join us for an annual Valentine's Day event. You can look forward to some Pokemons making their Pokemon Go debut as well as exclusive avatar items. So I'm guessing we... Uh, I'm guessing they're getting uh, new Pokemons in this uh, in in this event. Um, see, of you and anybody? That'd be interesting. That would be the love Pokemon. That'd be very interesting. That would be the po love Pokemon, though. <laughs> I won't get my hopes up too much because I'm sure that they won't think about it. But <sighs> I need it. Yeah. I need it. Um... Personally, from this event, and Sylveon would be amazing. Uh, from this event, I think the most uh, I'm looking forward to is easily going to be the uh, Valentine's Day um, Spinda. I really want that shot. Yes, that's another one. And it's a possibility that will be in raids, just because mm -hmm. Sylveon has been in raids already, so it's not a um, out-of-the-park out information. That one I'll raid. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Uh, but yes, so <laughs> I hope that that's what it's going to be. We won't know the details until probably later on this week or the next week following up, coming up to it. But we'll see. We'll see. And then, of course, the Kanto event, which we did mention. There is, though, a little bit of information about weekly one-coin Pokecoin bundles. Um, if you haven't noticed, uh, Niantic have been dropping quite a bit of bundles in the last few days. I think that we're testing it out and see how the people react, but these ones are going to be the ones for February. On February 1st, the first bundle is going to contain 20 Pokeballs, a remote Raid Pass, and a Rocket Radar. Ooh. That is really good bang for your buck. Yes, specifically because I want to finish that, uh, that quest, and I got the Rocket Radar there. Same. Will be a little bit easier oh, to, yeah. It will be a little easier to be able to complete now that I have at least one extra. Yeah, we get a free one, man. Yeah. To catch up. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> uh, February 8th, the bundle will include 8 incest, uh, 16 raspberries, and 10 pineapple berries. Uh, less of a thing, but I'm pretty sure they'll give us the berries for a reason. Um, it's still one pocket coin for your troubles. So, again, 8 incest is not bad. It's actually pretty good. I have over 80 of them. So. <laughs> I eh, yeah don't don't ask why I mean when I bought the bundle for the super incubators that's usually what it is so. yeah yeah so and then on the fifteen 
Uh, the bundle will be a room or raid pass, once again, 20 Pokeballs, 10 Great Balls, and 5 Ultra Balls. So a little bit of a linear win. Again, the room or raid pass is always welcome. Always, always. Oh, yeah. And then I on really the 22nd, we have 20 Poke, uh, Pokeballs, a room or raid pass, and 5 and so, so this one is still pretty good. Anything that, are, that contains a remote raid pass, dude, I'll take it. Because there's no way I'm going to be not getting enough remote race pass for this. But anyways. I really appreciate them doing that. That <laughs> yeah. is amazing. That is for sure. We do have a little bit of quality of life updates coming up in Pokemon Go. And some exciting things that's happening in February for that. You can look forward to an image gallery showing off the Pokestops and Gyms images that you and other trainers have submitted. This feature will roll out in different regions over time, starting with level 40 plus trainers in New Zealand and uh, on Tuesday, February 9th. And we will come available worldwide to trainers level 38 and above toward the end of, uh, of March of 2021. Um, this is actually good for the Wayfair because a lot of people are actually like, you know, they submit Wayfair and do things like that, and but they never really get reward aside from the bash that we have on game. Still, it's pretty nice when they're able to map out what they have been able to submit and what's been accepted through their wafer program. So, mm -hmm. pretty good. Uh, ever wanted to capture a moment to level up in Pokemon Go to share with friends? Well, soon you'll be able to do just that without screenshotting. The level up uh, social fe share feature will be coming in February in trainers worldwide. So. You guys know that we we every time we get it, some kind of thing, we screenshot and everything. There's going to be a way to be able to link up so you can post it on your social medias. Hopefully pretty easy knowing the upcoming of those informations. So instead of screenshotting every Pokemon, you'll have to, you can actually just send it through of what your accomplishments are. You know, you can share it with all your friends and family and whatever it is it is, you know. So <laughs> community and all. <laughs> and last... But not least, you'll soon be able to transfer legendary and mythical Pokemon when selecting multi Pokemons by enabling the functionality in game settings. We hope this will make managing Pokemon storage a bit easier for those that are a few who have a mass, special large collection. So, mass transfer on legendaries and mythicals. Now, there is, of course, you know, there's going to be some way of stopping that if you won't, don't want a mass transfer, but this will be make it a lot easier for like spotlight hours and everything incredibly easier <laughs> huge quality of life in, uh upgrade i i really really am gonna love that for especially meltan boxes yes yes oh my god i don't have to go and actually transfer it every time i need to oh my god that's uh that's a lightsaber right there that's a lightsaber right there <laughs> Mm. <laughs> oh my god um but yeah that's uh that's actually uh, that's what we that's actually the one that a lot of people will be talking about since the announcement um i i usually don't do a lot of transfers when it comes to like spotlight hours and everything but now that this is coming in i'm sure that i'll be doing a lot of legendary transfers now that i don't have to carry them all in the back of my head <laughs> mm. it's gonna be nice especially double candy experience or double candy and all that and of course oh baby let's hope Anyways, uh, but yes, those all are the favorite events. I thought that was actually a lot more than I expected to be. <laughs> um, make sure that you are ready because we are really, really, really up and going for it. Uh, two weeks before the Canto Celebration. Now, I did want to go over the Canto Celebration just one more time, but I think we can wait one more week uh, to let everybody know what's going on or what is still going to happen. Make sure you buy your ticket. If you do want to participate, the ticket will be available before the event, up to before the event. So um, we'll talk about like some of the things that you want to be doing when the event comes. But I'll postpone it until next week just because we are a little running a little bit long. And we still have our Get Good, Get Wrecked PvP section. Here we go, Chris. All right, Chris, first and foremost, before we get into a lot of different news and anything, how's your ultra battles been going? Um, I like to think Ultra Premier is actually one of my strong suits. Mm. Um, it's a lot stronger than my Master League, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> um, a lot of people tend to go into Ultra Normal, uh, because they think that one's one of the easier ones. But I'm one of the people that lead uh, Melmetal in Open, and I always seem to get hard countered by Melmetal, and it's very hard to come back from that usually. 
So in Premiere, I've had a lot of fun using Venusaur lead with uh, Empoleon and Togekiss. And I know you're thinking, that whole team loses to Obama Snow. Well, you're right. No, I'm joking. Um, it, it's very hard to come back from, but I see that my team hard counters a lot of the meta, especially the Empoleon Double Dragon that we see a lot. Um, but I, I really like your team too. Uh, yes. Just the fact that you use Meganium. Uh, what do you pair that up with too? For the so I've been doing. I I actually been enjoying enjoying Ultra League a lot more. And surprisingly enough, it's not. It's one of the best metas that I've seen in a while. Uh, for a lot of different reasons, but uh, I started out with having Empoleon just like yours, uh, but that was my lead. And then I have Crossel and Meganium. Now, why Meganium over Venusaur? Venusaur being a, even a stronger Pokemon. Well, I don't have a really good Venusaur I want to power up, especially for it. I've been waiting for a good time to be able to do it, and I really haven't had the chance to catch uh, something that's going to be good Ultra League meta. However... Uh, Meganium has been ready for me since the beginning of time and before it level 40 or level 50 came around. So I've been using it for the reasons that, of course, Frenzy Plan is still a powerful move. It counters and hard counters a Swampert so well. And Earthquake just decimates anything that really wants to go through, especially the opposing Napoleon when they have Drill back on around and they have no shields. And, you know, it's just beautiful to see the health, like, diminish in two seconds, <laughs> in a second worth of time. Crossel is an interesting addition. Uh, it's been something that I've been using quite a bit for the reason that there is a lot of fire flying Pokemons in the meta, Charizard specifically, yeah. and a lot of flyers, and people are not expecting a rock type to be in the back, especially Crossel. Now, Crossel is not the strongest pick when it comes down to it. However, it is, uh, you can hardwall like as. Um, a lot of different Pokemon, especially when I see the Charizard in the back. And if you go through my streams and Twitch and a lot of the picks there, Charizard just gets eaten alive. And he and he can oh. actually and Crustle can actually survive a blast burn from Charizard. It survives with enough HP to be able to take down the Charizard before it takes another a, a modern move uh, in there. So <laughs> it's it's yeah. interesting. It's really interesting. Now I am running a different team since reaching uh, the higher levels of ranks uh, ten and eleven. Uh, I've been running the Shadow Machamp because a lot of people have been using it and I'm like, okay, this is actually pretty cool. Um, I have learned that you have to use his shields a little bit more on it if you really want to counter everything else in, in their team. But once it gets going, it gets going. Now, this one, this Machamp has Payback instead of uh, Rock Slide, which is the most optimal move for Machamp to have in the Ultra League, especially against Flyers. Uh, however, uh, because I have Crossel in the back, I do have the chance to be able to uh, switch up pretty quickly if a flyer comes in and tries to start wrecking me. The only thing that I've been getting a little bit worried every time it comes around is the opposing Venusaurs. Uh, Venusaur being a not a hard wall, but a difficult Pokemon to get to to get through if you don't know the matchup well enough. Uh, and always expect the Swampert in the back. So Meganium is just like free reign right there. <laughs> However, uh, you also have to think that Meganium doesn't actually take quadruple damage or uh, normal damage from an Earthquake from Swampert, even though it's Stab, instead of like Venusaur taking normal damage. You know, Venusaur being a Grass uh, Poison type, he's supposed to take super effective damage, but because of the Grass typing, he doesn't. So he takes normal. Now Meganium actually takes resistant damage from it so it doesn't get one shot it from or close to it doesn't even get like i think it gets to half health if it's well enough to an earthquake but one earthquake is not enough to kill meganium and if even if a second earthquake comes around it still lives with 25 percent of its health so mm -hmm. um again swamper is still a pretty good uh counter uh, you can farm out the swamper so it's not a not a problem and then yeah I, I am a little bit weak because of the shadow being a little bit more weaker and I have to save my shields when I need to. But, you know, honestly, this team is carrying me out pretty well in the meta and I've been going positive sets in the last few. So I know my team a little bit well this time around. So hopefully it will carry me over to 20 and maybe even Legend. You never know. I, I'll get to it. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm inspired. But yeah, that's my meta team right now. Um, hopefully you guys are also having fun in the Ultra League. Make sure you let us know what is your best team to go running around with. Uh, if you're either doing classic or regular or whatever, good luck with those matches. Get to at least 20. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, but Chris, how about you tell us about all this news that happened this week for you? There's been a lot going on, especially, uh, it's kind of funny since this is Sylph's uh, off season. Um, so they're just getting back into battles now. Um, but uh, we just had the Shadow Cup 2.0 from Team Rocket uh, PvP. Shout out to them. Uh, and they hosted an awesome tournament where you could only use Shadow Pokemon. And it was a seven rounder. Uh, it was a, almost a full tournament. And uh, we actually ended up uh, having Dre Flames uh, as the winner. He's a very, very good California uh, trainer. So it's no su surprise to me that he won. Um, I, I was trying to look at his team, but I'm having a little bit of a hard time finding it. Uh, but I ended up going 2-5. I did not do well. Uh, I think some of the uh, quote-unquote uh, worst leads I could get was uh, <laughs> leading Shadow Dragonite into Shadow Bo uh, Gardevoir. Uh, I think I did that five times in this tournament. So, oh my gosh, it, it was brutal. Uh, very fun. I'm definitely going to do it again if they do another one, and I think they will. Uh, but yeah, huge shout out to Team Rocket PvP and Dre Flames for uh, putting up a show. Um, other than that, we actually had a, a Sylph All-Star Invitational uh, with a lot of the very prominent battlers and uh, social uh, PvPers. Um, and the winners of that was the Seven Wonders, uh, which has uh, Ricky1990, Alstark93, uh, Memphis uh, Flow uh, MD, Ali Lucky, Dr. Trotter, uh, Vinny, and Parzival, uh, Parzival. I know I said their names wrong. I'm very sorry. <laughs> they, I'm not surprised again to see these people. Uh, like th these are very, very, uh, very known uh, people in the PvP side. And uh, actually, today, right before the podcast, uh, Sylph actually announced that they're going to be doing a Sylph Arena uh, showdown. Oh. And uh, each month, the top 120 area competitors will be invited to an exclusive tournament, and the winner will earn an invite to the Continental Championships. Whoa. I am going to be trying my hardest to get into these showdowns. I want to go to Continentals. <laughs> this is amazing. Oh, God. <laughs> well, we all support, I'm super hyped. We all support you there, God, Chris, for sure. There's there's not other reason to try to compete against, you know, the one and only Speedy's Chief for the title of champion. So I got to be sooner or later. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I do hope that this is also nice to have some people get into the PvP meta. If you do not know what Silt Arena is, you uh, want to go to the silt.gg um, website. You can actually locate a lot of different Discord players, especially because of the pandemic being a remote battling uh, situation. And yeah, this is a good way to build up a little bit of knowledge when it comes to the PvP uh, scene. Celt Arena has been out there since PvP was introduced into Pokemon Go and their support and their uh, ways to make sure that this game it flourishes in the PvP scene has just been amazing. So thank you, Celt Arena. And again, if you want to be part of those types of competitions, uh, you can either join our Discord or we can show you where to go to be able to join a Discord in your area. Self.gg. Yes, definitely. So... <laughs> um, that will be interesting, and Chris, I wish you good luck. Hopefully, you get to <laughs> you. to that point. Um, but yeah, so I think that that wraps up the podcast because there is nothing else for the week of this week to happen. Uh, thank you. Ryan. So if there's nothing else, thank you so much for listening, everybody. You make sure that you can always listen us in our podcast services between Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Arha Radio. Stitcher, and many more other places. If you can leave a review in any of those places, we will really appreciate it. Uh, there's also a little, quick little announcement here. We are so close to 2,000 downloads on every single one of our episodes. So once this episode goes up and you can download it, that'd be amazingly support. Uh, and I, I told the Pure Letter right before the episode, it feels like we hit 1K like a month ago. <laughs> so it's, it's been crazy, man. 
Yes, definitely. It's been a uh, crazy, crazy times for sure. So don't forget to, of course, so, uh, follow us on our social media, myself at Pure Let It Go, Chris at Pokemon Trigger, please. Thank you for finally changing that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's, uh, I think that's it. Yeah, don't forget to also, of course, email us at purefarepodcast at gmail.com if you have any questions, concerns, or anything else that you want to tell us about your Pokemon Go life. And if anything else, check us out at thepurefarepodcast.com for the Professor Network. So, Chris, I have uh, you take us away for the night. All right, all right. Uh, we've had a pretty crazy month. I feel like next month is going to be a lot crazier, a lot better. Uh, let us know if you guys get any fun raids, especially in YouTube. Hook us up. And I wish you guys the best of luck going into February. Thank you guys for joining. Peace out. Have a good night, keep grinding, and we'll see you guys next week.